Hi, in today's video, we will discuss about openings in slabs. I'm going to give you four tips. I'm going to discuss four things which are going to be useful. Many times clients and many times other stakeholders like electrical engineers or architects ask for cutouts in slabs. Now this cutouts in slabs sometimes are planned and sometimes are asked after the construction of the slab. So now there are two points to discuss. One is cutouts before construction and one after construction. Now after construction it is always better you ignore that request and don't provide any puncturing of the slabs. Core cutting is strictly not great. So if you read through my blog here you can understand a bit more and in addition to hearing the video I request you to come to civilera.com and hit on blog and then you can see this as the first blog here. Now if you are seeing this video after a few days or months it could be down the order and may not be at the top of the blog. So as of now it's at the top of the blog. So here I have given what are the things that you need to look into in case of puncturing the slab. Now in case if you are interested in understanding something more on sleeves in beams you can hit here and see another video on sleeves in beams. Now whoever is seeing this video I request you to go through the blog as well because I am only mentioning some of the important things that which I want to explain in terms of sketches that I am doing here. So in that the major thing is how do you attend opening ahead of construction how can you plan that so that's what I'm going to tell you in this particular video other things there are far more important things which I have explained here which you will get if you read the blog so those who are seeing the video and the YouTube please ensure you read the blog as well so in case if you have to plan for the sleeve what are the things so if it is a very small opening code says you can ignore that. So let us come to SP34 which talks a lot about this particular openings. So in SP34 you will see a close number 9.6 which will talk about openings in slab. So the main thing is it says where openings are small and the slab is not subjected to any special type loading or vibration conditions there are certain precautions to be taken. So you can read this and I will better explain it in terms of a sketch here so that it is very clear. So now this is the figure. So now what it says is if you have an opening interfering with your slab or with your slab rebars rather then you have to provide equivalent amount of reinforcement half of it here and half of it here on either side of the opening. So I will explain it a bit more. So in case if you have a slab something like this and then say your cutout is somewhere here and if you have rebars running like this and say you have 8 at 200 as the rebar and now two rebars are cut by this particular opening. So you have to provide equivalent area half on either side. So that's what the code says. So you have to give 1 8 here and 1 8 here so that's what it means so the same way in the other direction also how many number of bars are being cut half of it has to be replaced at the edges so that's what the code tells you now what if you are having say three bars cut so you have to give equivalent area so you cannot give one and a half number of bars so what do you do you can give 110 diameter something like that or 28 diameter so this will be 28 28 or you can give 110 by area it has to be at least 50 percentage of what is being cut so that's what the code says you can read it so in either direction you have to look like that so for example in this direction also there will be some bars cut so half of it has to be provided on either side and you also have to give a diagonal rebar so that all the loads are bridged the load has a path around the cutout so that's the intention of doing this so if you come back to sp34 it's very clear it says that this has to be ld so your rebar should have a development length from your edge of the cutout so in 
all the cases it should be there and your diagonal bars are also going to have a dimension of 80 times the diameter so all these are mentioned here in the closest you can read that so at least one half the quantity of principal steel intersected by the opening is to be placed parallel to principal steel on each side of the opening extending ld beyond the edges of the opening the diagonal stitching bars are put across the corners of rectangular holes or so placed as to frame circular openings they should be placed both at top and bottom if the thickness of the slab exceeds 150 mm so as long as your slab thickness is within 150 you have to give only a layer otherwise you have to give it both the top and bottom the diameter of these bars should be the same as that of the larger of the slab bars and their length should be about 80 diameters so that's about the diagonal bar now read this note in general openings of diameter less than 250 millimeters or of size smaller than 200 by 200 may be treated as insignificant openings so you need not do anything specially for that you can incorporate that without anything in your design this is for the planned opening in case of drilling it even smaller ones it's better if you can avoid otherwise you have to do it with utmost care now coming to the blog I have mentioned that the additional ray bars are explained in the video which I did now and I have also mentioned about taking care of the cutout by analyzing it properly incorporating in the model. So I will just quickly show you how you can do this in ETAP. So I have opened a slab here. So in case if you want to have an opening in slabs you can model that and capture the additional forces developed. Now, this can be done only if your slab is modeled as a shell not if it is a membrane because if the slab is modeled as a membrane then the effect of openings or the stresses cannot be captured from the slab so it has to be a shell thin for sure so i am going to draw that so what i will do is i will go to draw and then as usual i will draw a floor and pick it and here you can see that in the drop down you have an option called opening so i'll pick that opening and then unfortunately it will prompt only one dimension from the corner it won't pick both the dimension but that's okay i will click here and say if my opening size is 775 by 1250 something like that i will use the perpendicular snap and then complete the opening now say in case i want this away from the corner i can pick this and then go to edit replicate and then give that dimension say for example one meter and say y minus 0.5 so you can replicate that and then go and delete this go and delete this and you can see you have a cutout here now if this is modeled as a shell thin definitely you can capture the forces if this is modeled as a membrane you will not be able to so please note that your slab has to be shell thin when you are modeling openings now once you load it and when you analyze you will be able to capture the stresses you will be able to capture the moments across and around the opening so that's how you need to do the model i hope this helps now i request and suggest you read the blog along with this video so that you can get the complete information about openings in slabs i will also following up with another blog on tips to decide if you can provide an opening in a slab after construction many times clients and users will want to incorporate a stair in a room and then they are doubtful if i can cut a piece of slab will that affect anything things like that so incorporating that i'm planning to do a next blog and a video very soon so if you want to get that please follow our blogs and you can hit on contact us here and then fill the form to get the future videos you can also read all our other blogs and information in the website and fill any form here to be in touch thank you for watching this video hope this helped you to understand something new about 
opening scene slabs.